Hello my YouTube friends. Today I'm gonna try to give you 25 live streaming hacks in less than 10 minutes. It won't be easy, but Mark, my editor, is a <laughs> wizard. So we'll see how it goes. These hacks are all things that will improve your OBS knowledge and make you a better streamer. So let's get to it! My analytics say that 80% of the folks that watch my content are not subscribed. Am I doing something wrong? If so, let me know in the comments. But if you are looking for tools, tips, and tricks that can help make you a better YouTuber or live streamer, subscribe to the channel and click that bell so you don't miss any new content. It's totally free. Okay, Mark, let's get a timer up here somewhere and let's do this. First, we have the ability to change themes. And if we just go into settings and then general, there's theme right at the top. Some of these are absolutely really cool. And then of course we have the original theme, which is I bleach horrible. If you've ever had a situation where you recorded something in OBS and it didn't seem to be in the folder that you were in, you can just go into OBS, click file, and then show recordings, and you'll probably be able to find it in that folder. Next we have our show settings folder, and this one's awesome because if you're ever installing plugins or anything like that, this will take you right into the folder. Number four is the undo. So if I move my little window around and then I go up and I go to edit, we can undo and I can press control Z and undo just using hotkeys. It's freaking awesome. Number five, we can add a settings profile. As you go up to profile and you go to add and I'm gonna just add a setup one here. And now you can see that it's there. And if I go into our settings, all of our settings are fresh and new meaning we can just create an entirely new profile to test out new settings and things that we might like. If I go into a different profile, you can see it's completely different, which means we can set up different profiles for different streams or testing. The next one is the scene collection, and we can go in here and change the scene collection. And you can see I have a lot of different streams that I have set up and lots of testing that I do. And it's really easy just to add a new scene collection by clicking new and typing in the name and boom. That creates an entire new collection for you to create. Number seven is the stats window. If we go up to view and we click on stats, it brings it up. If you're going to do any troubleshooting for your stream because you're having lag problems or anything like that, bring up the stats window and this will tell you everything you need to know about the health of your live stream. Number eight is the custom browser dock. So if you go into view and you go to docs, you can create a custom browser dock. I'll just call this one chat and I'll put in the URL to my chat. I click apply and it creates it. And all I have to do is drag it and dock it anywhere on the screen. And I can expand it out and there we go. Now the chat is embedded in our OBS. Number nine is the ability to add a virtual camera. If you go down here to the controls in the bottom right and start your virtual camera, and you can see, I'm just gonna open zoom. I can go in here and select video. I can drop that down and select my OBS camera and you can see, that it is showing exactly what's going on in OBS. And then I can start a meeting and there we go, it's in there. Now it's not in there with audio, that's another trick for another video. Number 10 is one of my favorites. We can actually zoom our preview window. All you have to do is right click and go to preview scaling. And then we just wanna select canvas and then all we have to do is click off the area of the screen, hold down our space bar, and we can use our mouse wheel to zoom our preview in and out, which means that we can really adjust the size of any of our assets if we were having a problem doing it before. Number 11 is the multi-view. If we go up into view, drop that down, and we can select multi-view window. That's the one I'm using. You can do a full screen one as well. And this brings up little icons for all of your screens. And you can just click on any one of them and switch your scenes this way. It gives you more of a visual way to just switch scenes instead of clicking on them over on the left-hand side. It's really a pretty awesome little feature that not a lot of people know about. 
Number 12, we have the crop. If I hold down the Alt key and I move these little dots over here on the edge of any of our assets, we can go ahead and crop up our camera or any other view. This will work for anything. The next one would be the stretch. And if I hold down the Shift key, I can stretch these to whatever kind of goofy way I want. And of course, number 14, if I right click on any asset and then I go to transform, I can reset the transform it will go back to its original shape. Number 15, adjust the webcam video settings. And a lot of people don't know that you can adjust your webcam settings. All you have to do is right click on your webcam, go to properties and click configure video. So I can go in here and turn off the awful exposure that's auto done and a lot of other auto stuff. And I can adjust my webcam image to exactly how I want it to be. This makes it really easy to avoid the automatic white balance, the automatic focus, and all the kind of things that make your webcam go absolutely crazy. Plus, you can adjust it and get a better picture. Number 16, we're gonna do some gradient text. So I'm gonna add a text box here. I'm gonna change my font really quick. Then I'm just gonna type my name in here. And if I go down here, I can click on the gradient button. And so I'm going to select my first color. We're gonna try this yellow right here. And I'm going to go ahead and select my second color right here. We're gonna use a blue color like this and just click okay. And now we have a gradient and I can move this direction bar around to move our gradient around and give it a really unique feel. Number 17, it's the text background. So I'm gonna go back into my Michael text and I'll go down and select my background color. You can see it's black. But if I turn up this opacity, we can actually add that black background in there. I can go in here and I can modify the color of that background any way that I want. And we'll go with a little bit of a dark red right here looks fantastic. Number 18, back to the text tool, we're going to add an outline. If we click right here, we can go and adjust the width of our outline. We can actually change the color of our outline if we would like. There are so many cool things you can do with this text tool. I really love it. And a lot of people don't use this at all. And you really should. So now you know a couple of cool tricks with the text tool. Number 19 is a simple webcam border. And I really like this one, it's super simple. We're just gonna click the plus in sources. We're gonna go to color source, click okay. Now we just have to select our color, click okay. And we can resize that color up so it fits right around our border and it looks pretty cool. Very simple. If I switch scenes, you can see it right there. For number 20, you may be wondering how you're able to use these backgrounds in every scene without having to recreate them every time. Well, that's really simple. And what I'm gonna do is click plus and I'm going to go and add a scene. Then I'm going to select the scene I created and there we go. We have a background already created from our nested scene. That's how to use nested scenes and you really should use them because they're awesome. For number 21, we're gonna take it a step further. I'm gonna show you how to add an animated border. So we're just gonna go ahead and click on media source and then I'm gonna browse to the local media source I wanna use and I'm gonna click loop because it's a short clip and there we go. We're gonna move that below our camera and we'll resize it up. So it's just around the border edge of our camera and I don't really like how that looks. So let's use the green one and there we go. That looks pretty cool. The next one I wanna show you is source transitions. What we're gonna do is right click on that and we're going to go to show transition. We're going to select the slide and we're gonna click okay. Then we're gonna right click on it again and we're gonna to go to hide transition, select slide and we're going to change it to right and then click okay. And then when I show it and hide it, you can see it slides in from the right hand side. Number 23 is the Luma wipe. So I'm gonna go over here to my scene transitions. We're going to select add Luma wipe and we can drop this down. There are all kinds of different Luma wipes that we can select. A lot of people don't even know that this feature exists, but these are really cool transitions. So there we go. We're gonna select that stripe one, click okay. Now when we switch scenes, we get that stripe transition. So for number 24, I added three Luma scenes. And what we're going to do is we're gonna right click on each of these scenes. I'm gonna go to transition override and I'm going to select a different Luma wipe scene for each one. And what you're gonna notice here now is that we have a different transition for each of our scenes. It's really awesome. So you can specifically set which transition you wanna use for each scene. 
Number 25, last but not least, is our alpha transition. What we're gonna do is click the little down arrow. We're going to select add stinger. We're going to click okay when this comes up. Then we're going to go and browse to the file that we've already created. And they are these long ones here. We're gonna use the Z one. I'm gonna click open. And then we just have to click use track mat and okay. So now when we switch scenes, well, we get this awesome alpha track mat. I love these. And here is a different one that I have set up. Now, if you wanna see how the alpha channel stingers are put together, you should check these videos out. And if you're always looking for tools, tips, and tricks that can help make you a better YouTuber or live streamer, subscribe to the channel. My name is Michael Fire Jr. Thank you so much for watching. Have a great day, and I'll see you in the next one.